Good morning, my 3D printing family. This is Mark with Upgrades Complete, and here is the solve that I found for the uh, CR10 V3 filament runout sensor. Um, this, I knew right off the bat, seeing that it was vertical, that it was going to put stress on the filament. I knew it needed to be mounted on a 45, as you can see in my build video, and I didn't have to look far for a solution. Thank you to Mike again over at RM3D for designing and doing a video on this. This is a 45 degree mount for the filament runout detector. It uses, of course, five 3D printable parts. This took me about uh, 10 hours to print because I wanted to make sure it was super stable, 30% gyroid infill, using Pro PLA. Um, as usual, I do all my upgrades in industrial gray, and that's just because I prefer it that way. Um, the rings are really smooth, very nice, and the 608ZZ bearings, of course, are available on Amazon. Now, I will put a link in the description to Mike's install video uh, for you to watch. In the meantime, I am going to get this mounted up on the machine and show you the final results. And just a few seconds later, like magic, there it is. Our completed roller assembly for our filament guide. Now it will mount here on a 45 and our filament will run through the guide wheels. Then this is the, once again, the 608 bearings and it worked out really well. Everything press fit into place using the force of a 200 pound press. Um, yes, I actually did have to use my press uh, to get the uh, wheel guides, uh, the filament guides onto the bearings, but that is nothing against Mike or the design because I love when something is engineered well and maybe even a little over engineered because some of the pressures that I put on these parts would have cracked anything less than this design. So I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed by it. And um, one thing I do want to note is you see the wheel guide and the filament guide and the bearing have a raised area there on the one side. It will not have that on the other. So make sure your orientation is correct before you put them onto the post. Because if for some reason you didn't realize that and had to take one off, well, it requires a bit more effort and maybe uh the soul of your firstborn son but we were not going to talk about that here we have it on the table and as always i do recommend doing this on a flat surface where you will not lose any screws now for the holes themselves remember this is untapped plastic so what you're going to want to do is open those holes up a little bit using either a self-tapping screw or just a head of your screwdriver enough to bow out the top so your screws have a place to see and they will thread themselves without a problem all four went in in under a minute now talking about the mounting holes and t-nuts this is a much much thicker than the stock mount um that being said these stock screws will work uh with the t-nuts it actually does make it through but if you have one of these and you will find a link in the description for this part on RM3D and make sure to thank Mike. And of course, get yourself an iFixit toolkit. Uh, he has that in the links also. I went with the M4x10s. They are slightly longer and they will not bottom out in the channel um, through the T-nut. Uh, this assembly gives you a bit of extra meat, so you'll be good to go once you have it all assembled. Now, I'm going to go put this up on the machine now. Here we have the filament runout sensor mounted up on top of our machine. And I have to say, I like it. I really, really like it. I rerouted my wire and I will neaten that up for the runout sensor uh, to keep it out of the way of everything else. If you'll notice from the side, there is a lot of meat here. There are your mounting screws and the lineup. I'm trying to get it exact. The lineup for the filament roll is dead on accurate. Um, thank you, Mike from RM3D for such a fantastic job. I'm very impressed with it. And I, if I get another V3, which I'm sure I will in the near future, 
I will make sure to be using this.